Welcome to E3. Today's message, um, I just want to title it In Honor of Mothers. In Honor of Mothers. Just help me tell someone, in honor of mothers. You know, when the word mother is mentioned, for some of us who have lost our mothers or lost our loved ones, it may come to you with a tear or two, you know, thinking about what has happened. Today, we're going to be looking at uh, in honor of mothers. Now, what exactly is mothering? I'm going to be a little academic. Please don't mind me. What exactly is mothering? Mothering simply is the process of caring for children as a mother. That's what it is. It's, it's the uh, present continuous of mother, right? So that's what it is. But more importantly, and I'd like us to, to look at it from that perspective, it is caring for people in a way that mother does. Caring for people in a way that a mother does. Now, um, this season is not just a time for you to honor and celebrate your biological mother, but for every woman, for every lady that has stood as a form of support to you, that has given you those harsh rebukes that you need. How many of you know that? We need harsh rebukes every now and then. How many of you us know that? Yeah, we do. We do because sometimes those are the things that make us into the men that we are or make us into the women that we are. Now, the celebration started sometime in the 16th century in church in England when they celebrate what is called Mothering Sunday. And it was done on the fourth Sunday um, after the beginning of Lent. And so... From year to year, the date changes because the date for Easter celebration also changes from year to year as well in line with the lunar calendar. Now, like I mentioned earlier, there are essentially two days where the celebration is done in different parts of the world. For example, in the UK, in Ireland, and um, many parts of Europe for which we have a greater inclination to that celebration is done on the fourth Sunday after Lent, after Lent begins, and that Sunday happens to be today. Help me tell someone today is Mothering Sunday. You know, sometimes as Pentecostals, we may not be very conversant with all of these traditions, but it's important that we go beyond the tradition to go and view and exemplify and typify what it actually stands for. And then, of course, in the United States and in America and different and some other parts of the world, the celebration of mothers is done on the second Sunday in May. You know, um, I'd like to just say this. Anytime my wife um, talks about uh, the, the, the burden, the responsibility of being a mother, ah, this, this, that, that, you know what I usually say? I usually tell her that that's the reason why we did not just give you only one day to celebrate you, but at least we have two official days in which we celebrate mothers. Can we put our hands together for mothers in the house today? Now, I'm sure you, you, you've heard this being said again and again by our senior pastor, that he believes strongly that society started off being um, matriarchal. Matriarchal simply means society started off being the women that were the ones in charge up until the fall. Because you re realize on the fall in Genesis chapter 3, verse 16, God speaking to Eve said that your desire will be of your husband. So in other words, her desire previously to that time was not of her husband. She was not, as it were, under the control, as it were, of her husband. But that is a scriptural reference that we could draw to that truth. But if you take a look at um, different parts of the world today, you'll find out that um, the matriarchal society is, we still see pockets of such um, societies around the world. For example, in China, in uh, Musu in China, we have a season of matriarchal society there. In Costa Rica, where's Costa Rica? Are you in the house today? All right, okay. 
In Bribri in Costa Rica, we also have a matriarchal society there. What it simply means is that instead of a place where you have the Oba or the king or the prominent ruler being a man, the prominent ruler in that case is actually a woman. And then in Kenya, we also have a representation there in the Umoja society in Kenya. And then in Indonesia, I'm just mentioning different parts of the world where we have matriarchal societies still being practiced. And we have it in Indonesia as well. And then of course, I'm sure we are very much aware of this. For those of us who have had the opportunity of going to GH, you know what GH means? Yes, Ghana, uh, our neighbors. You know that in Akan, Ghana, um, they also practice um, a form of system where you refer to where, where the ladies or the woman is the dominant figure. In fact, that sometimes when, when, when a man marries a woman, from what I hear, the woman bears his name. Now, how does that sound to you guys? Oh, sorry. What, what did you say? Sorry, the man bears the woman's... Uh, so I'm correct now. The woman still bears her name. And then the man bears her name. How does that sound to us, guys? Right? It's, it's not normal, right? Okay, I, I'm hearing somebody say, God forbid. All right, but the point, the point I'm trying to make with all of this is that if you were born into that kind of a society, you will see it as a norm. In fact, I understand that, you, you know, in Nigeria, basically, the woman bears the husband's name, but then in some parts of Ghana, the man bears the wife's name. And you know, when it comes to um, legal issues in Nigeria, if you're asked what is your state of origin or where you come from, which, where do you call? Where your father is from. So it's so is, is patriarchal, where your father is from. Now, and then if you're in Ghana, if you are a man in Ghana, if you're asked where you are from, what would you call? Where? Beautiful, thank you, you're sharp, smart. Is where your mother is from. Now, just imagine and think with me for a minute that there is a Nigerian, right? Uh, there's somebody who, whose mother is from, who stays in Ghana. He stays in Ghana. However, his mother is from Nigeria, while his father is from Ghana. Think, think with me very well. Though. His mother is a Nigerian. His father is a Ghanaian. So where did that person come from? No. In Ghana, it is believed that it is where your mother comes from, that that's where you come from. While in Nigeria, it is where your father comes from. So if that person comes to Nigeria, I want to now claim a nationality or claim a place. That I say, this, is, this is, is where my father comes from. It's where my mother comes from. I want to claim. What, what will the Nigerian system or the Nigerian government do? Uh, as absurd as that may sound, you may find out that that could very well be true. But the bottom line of, of all of this is just to let us know that irrespective whichever side of the divide we find ourselves, it's important that we honor mothers. And so that's why I'm speaking this morning on in honor of mothers. Now in um, Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, the Bible tells us that we should do what? Honor our fathers and our mother. I know somebody's already deleting fathers. No, is it two? Honor father and mother, right? So that, you're, so that it may be well with you in the land. And then in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2, what does the Bible tell us then? That children, we should honor our parents, right? So that, because this is the first commandment that has a promise. Now, I'd like, to, I'd like you to think with me for a minute. Whenever God gives an instruction, whenever God gives a word, the reason he does that is first for our benefit. Please tell someone, whenever God gives an instruction, it is first for your benefit. Help me tell someone. It is first for our benefit. So it's important that we settle down and look a little bit on what it is to honor. Wow, what does it really mean to honor? What does it mean to honor? To honor simply means 
to esteem. It means to value. It means to take the person's opinion seriously. It means to do something, it means to give respect to the person. Now, you'll agree with me that as it stands, we are living in a society in a day and an age where every new generation believes that they are wiser than the generation before. Am I correct? Am I correct? Okay. Um, take your mind back to when you were a teenager. But you know some things that your dad or mom did that you felt like, ah, no level. Right? Am I speaking to someone? Or am I beside myself? Right? There are some things that they will do. There are some things that they will say. You say, ah, daddy, that one is old school. That one is no longer relevant. That one is no longer trending. That one is no longer important. But when it comes to the place of honor, you know, and that's why we get, where you get it wrong many times. When it comes to the place of honor, it's important that we value the things that they value. Very important. We value the things that they value. Now, one of the things that goes on in life is that, of course, as times change and seasons change, we need to evolve. But when it comes to having honor and respect, that's something that culture should never take away from us as God's people. So the Bible says that the first commandment with a promise says that we should do what? Honor our parents. Honor our parents. Give them respect. Value the things that they value. Take into consideration, think about the things that they say, right? Now, the truth of the matter, for those of us who are, who are now parents, you know that there are things that you perhaps did when you started parenting, that if you're given an opportunity with the next child or the one after, you do differently. Am I correct? So it means that we're not perfect. But the Bible still says, honor and value our parents. Praise the Lord. Because this is the first commandment with the promise. And the promise it has is a promise of longevity. The promise it has is a promise of increase. So if you want to go far, if you want to increase, if you want to abound upon the face of this earth, one thing that is important for you to do is to give honor to those whom honor is due. Praise the Lord. Now, in 1 Peter 3, 7, I'd like us to read that. 1 Peter 3, 7. It also gives us another illustration. Speaking of honor now, that's where I'm now switching over to women. It's giving us another illustration and he says, can we, okay, likewise ye husbands with them, dwell with them, that's your, your wives, according to knowledge, giving honor to, unto thy wife. Giving honor unto the wife. Please help me tell a man be, beside you, say give honor to your wife. Someone is changing it to say give honor to your girlfriend. Is that what the Bible said? Okay, give honor to your wife as unto a weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life. And can we read that last part together? Eh? Can we say it together? That your prayers be not hindered. Please help me just tap a man. Say, you, did you see what the Bible said? That your prayers be not hindered. She's so stubborn. Everything I say, she does the other thing around. What did the Bible say? Give honor. Give honor. So that what? That your prayers will not be hindered. Now, you know that the Bible talks about if two shall agree concerning anything, anything on earth, that it shall be done for them by my Father in heaven. Remember, Jesus himself said that. If two shall agree concerning anything, whatever it is, it shall be done. Now, all through uh, the month or previous series, we've been, having, we've been talking about family matters, right? And we've talked about the actual constituent of a family. The actual constituent of a family is a man and a woman and children, if any. A man and a woman. Now, so when you look at it from that perspective, when a man and a woman come together in agreement for anything, 
Scripture says, if two shall agree concerning anything, what shall happen? It shall be done. So for men, the reason the prayers do not look like they are being answered. Can we see where the problem is coming from? Can we see where the problem is coming from? Ah, the men are not responding. No. Can we see where the problem is coming from? Now, I always like to read scriptures not out of context, but in context. But then the, the truth is, um, if you read the preceding verse, right, it talked about um, a woman who is married to an ungodly man, and that by, that's in First Peter now, and that by her attitude, by her disposition towards her husband, she'll be able to win her husband over. Now, so tell somebody that that responsibility, tell him, I want you to tell a man now, now that responsibility is, was directed to the women. Can you hear me tell? Okay, tell a guy by your side now, because every guy here is, will eventually get married at some point in their lives. Am I talking or thinking? I'm talking, right? Unless, of course, you want to be like the Apostle Paul who never got married but dedicated his life to the preaching of the gospel. Because I come to think of it, which woman would have been able to marry him? You know, as in, he was a bond servant for Christ. When I mean bond servant, as in, he was in chains. And then he was going on missionary journey from one continent to the other, always traveling. So it means that it would have been difficult for him to have um, raised up a family, right? Okay, so but if the, if, unless the person, that's, that's the role the person wants to play, just help me tell the person that God has given an instruction that men should honor women. Help me tell the person that. Now, how, do you, how are you going to honor your wife today? And should it just be something that we'll do today alone or something that we'll do on a daily basis? What's the plan that you have? What's, how are you going to honor your mother today? How are you going to honor that auntie today? Now, as I'm preaching and sharing God's word with us, I want us to just begin to cast our mind back to all the different people that have played a mothery role in your life and make up your mind that today, even if, the, even if you send the person a message and the person say, ah, wait to be murdering Sunday, and just say to the person, I saw you, I just want to use today to appreciate you for all that you represent and all that you are. Praise God. Because the truth is, being a woman is a thankless job. More often than not, there's nobody who tells them thank you, who tells them we appreciate you for the things that you have done. Praise God. That your prayers be not hindered. That your prayers be not hindered. Praise the Lord. Now, I'd like us to just take a quick look at different women in scriptures who did different things as we remind ourselves of the fact that irrespective of the limitations that society places on us as women, God has called you to be the best version of yourself. God has called you to be the best version of yourself. Not to compare yourself with another. Not to compare your husband with another person's husband. Not to compare the position that you are now with another person's position, but to look at yourself and say, this is who I am now, but I know that God is taking me somewhere. Praise the Lord. And one of the things I'm thankful about is that the entire summit has been able to address that to a large degree. That the fact that you're a woman, you are not a second citizen. In ancient times, that is what it was. That is what it was. In ancient Rome, particularly, that is what it was. And so that's why I'd like us to, to, to look at someone in ancient Rome in the Christian church, and her name is 
Priscilla. Priscilla in the ancient church. In Acts chapter 16, that's where Paul talks about, about, about him. And, and you know, if two people are to be mentioned, usually the more prominent person is mentioned first, right? That's why you have Mr. and Mrs. when you're trying to address people. But then in her case, it was Priscilla, greet Priscilla and Aquila. So herself and her husband were working together. But the point I'm trying to make is that she became the best version of herself. For example, if you take a look at around the world, you will also find out different people who are excelling at the things that they are doing. For example, um, um, who, is, who, is the, who, is the, who is the present um, WTO um, president? Sorry? I can't hear us. I was actually expecting the ladies to answer, but it's like the guys that are giving me the answer. All right, beautiful. Do you know that she has a husband who is very supportive? I understand he's a professor, right? But doing his own thing, right? Fulfilling destiny, as it were. But he did not limit the wife or restrict the wife from being the person that God would want her to be. No, so one of the things that we need to do as men is to ensure that while you're fulfilling purpose, while you're pursuing destiny, release your wives, release women in your lives to be the best version of themselves. And I'm here this morning to charge ladies in the house. Hallelujah. I'm here this morning to charge ladies in the house that do not allow society to describe you. Do not allow society to paint a picture that every time there's a, there's a mu music video to be played, we, when we need to show someone that is skimpily dressed, then is a woman that we should bring in there. No, that's, that's, that's not who you are. That's not who you are at all. God has called you and has called you valuable. He has called you precious. He has called you someone in whom he has instilled his spirit. Hallelujah. You know, because many times we allow society, we allow media to project us on us who we really are. But the truth of the matter is that you have been released to become all that you can be. Scripture speaking says that we are joined hairs with Christ. Joined hairs with Christ. It says in Christ, there is neither Greek nor Jew. There is neither male nor female. But we are all joined hairs together with him. We are all joined hairs together with him. We are all joined hairs. We are all co-equals. We are all partners together with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So my charge and my challenge to you this morning as ladies in the house, as young ladies in the house, is that you should aspire to become the best version of yourselves. Is that you should aspire to go for that dream. It should aspire to go for that job. It should aspire to go for that opportunity. Because God's spirit resides on your inside. God's spirit resides on your inside. And there is nothing that you cannot do. There is nothing that you cannot accomplish. And, and one of the ladies I'd like, to, like us to look at today in scriptures is a lady called Mary, who eventually became the mother of our Lord Jesus. You know, she was a teenager at the time. And of course, she lived in a day when it was an abomination to be found pregnant. That was the period in which she lived. In fact, to the point whereby she could practically be stoned to death for just by doing that because it would be believed that she had committed adultery or fornication. And because of that, in line with Jewish and Mosaic practices, she is to be stoned to death. And then an angel visited her and told her this wondrous news. And hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And she was startled with it. I'm a, I'm, I'm a virgin. I'm a teenager, betrothed to my beloved Joseph. How can this thing be? She asked. And the angel responded by saying, the power of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy One, will overshadow you. And how did she end the whole discussion and the whole discourse? How did she end it? She said, be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word. Now, what has, God, what has God's word, what does God's word say about you as a lady? 
What does God's word say about you as a person, as a man? What, what does God's word say about you? Be it unto me according to your word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, you would also agree with me that in the same instance, and you know, so, 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 someone, had, someone had said this, that, so, that um, the, the angel also visited the high priest. And the high priest's name was Zechariah. And what did the angel tell him? He told him that because Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth had been without children for a long time. And he was already old, serving in the courts as a high priest when it was his time to go into the Holy of Holies to, to present sacrifices on behalf of the people to God, the angel appeared to him and gave him a very similar message that his wife, Elizabeth, was going to give birth to a son. And his response was, can I still have a child seeing that I'm this old? Now, someone once said that it's like there was a, some form of partiality there. Mary asked a question that sounded similar. Zachariah asked a question. For Mary, she was praised, you know, for asking the question and further explained to. But for Zachariah, there was no further explanation. Is anybody thinking like that? You're thinking like that, right? Now, firstly, it's safe to say that from the incidences, Mary asked a question in, out of curiosity and asked the question in faith. But Zechariah asked the question in a different way. Now, why do I say that? Abraham, the patriarch of faith, how old was he when he gave birth? How old was his wife when he gave birth? 90. Do you understand? So, and this is the priest who has read the scriptures back to back because for you to be a priest or for you to be a Jew, you need to know the Torah from back to back. You should be able to quote it, you know, from back to back. So he knows already that it had happened in the past, that Abraham, the father of faith, and his wife, Sarah, gave birth to a child at their old age. So getting the message from Gabriel, Angel Gabriel, and Angel Gabriel introduced himself and said, I'm Gabriel, I'm the one who stands in the presence of God. He did not just say, I'm just a regular angel, a senior angel, you know, for that matter, standing in the presence of God and bringing you this news. And yet he was asking, how can these things be? Now, how many times have you asked God, how can these things be? How many times have you asked God, God, can I really do this? Can I really make it? Can I really make it in this country? Can I really proceed forward? Can I really get that degree? How many times have we asked God that question? How can these things be? I charge you this morning that instead of asking how can these things be from a Zechariah perspective, ask in a Mary's heartfelt faith towards God. Lord, I trust you. I trust your word concerning my life. I trust that the things that you have spoken concerning me will find fulfillment in my life. And so I'm asking how can these things be? Remember the study that we had on what it is to ask. In, in, in Matthew chapter 7, the Bible tells us, Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. And of course, from there, we see the acronym ASK, which means ask for A, S for seek, and K for knock. And for everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, find. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. God has an enviable future for you. God has a future for you that is so bright that he is written and enshrined in his word. All we need to do is to take God at his word and move in faith and move in faith. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together for Jesus, if you will. So Mary gives us a typical example of someone that we would want to look up to and to follow. Now, there are countless number of people all through scriptures who, by their life as women, were able to stand out and make a difference in a world, back in the, back in the day, take note, that had no regard for women. 
in a world that had no regard? How much more now that there's a lot of freedom and a lot of freedom for expression? So if someone like um, Ruth could become um, uh, uh, so relevant to the redemption of mankind by being devoted to... Should I just pose for this camera? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, please. The, the, the snapping had been distracting me. <laughs> all right. Okay, you've gotten a good shot now. Okay, all right. Thank you. Praise God. So back in the day, like I said, women had a lot of limitations. They had a lot of things restricting them. In fact, they had a lot of restrictions that there are certain periods of the month that they can't even go to the temple. Do you understand? As in, it was really that, really, really, really that, really that serious or really that bad. But a lot of things have changed now. So now this freedom that we have now gives us much more opportunity to become all that God would have us be. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, I'll just make mention of different women in the Bible who stood out and made their mark in the sand of time. I just mentioned Ruth. Ruth, um, we know the story of Ruth. She lost her husband. But then she knew that Naomi, her mother-in-law, was serving the true God, the God of Israel. And so she said to herself that I will not leave you, that where you go, I will go your people will be my people. That's in Ruth chapter 1 verse 16. And your God will be my God. And the story progressed from there. That when Naomi told the other lady to leave, she, the, other, that, the other lady left. But Ruth stayed back. And because she stayed back, she now became a part of the genealogy through which Jesus came to the world. Praise the Lord. Which other woman should I mention in scripture? Mary, Mary Magdalene. Where we, you know, back in the day, if a woman should come and give a testimony, right, it would not be believed to be true. Do you understand? It would not be believed to be true. Um, I, 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 had, I uh, um, saw a, a social media feed about um, a lawyer who, made, who, 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 who got involved in some practices. And then, but the part that struck me in the whole conversation was that Will they believe the word of a woman over his word? You know, that's what, that, that, was, that was the statement that he made. And of course, that was like what was obtainable back in the day. If a woman was to come to give a testimony in the courts, it will not be believed. But do you know that when Jesus rose from the dead, the first set of persons to meet him and to witness the resurrection and to see him come back from the dead was who? A woman, Mary Magdalene. And she was the one that went to go and tell the news to the disciples. And you know the story. When she went and told the news to them, what happened? All of them, they ran. All of them ran to come and see for themselves if it was true. And of course, Peter and the disciples, they ran there and found out that it was true and so confirmed the news. So that tells us the role that women have played in scriptures. Who else will I mention? Should I mention Hannah? Hannah was a woman who was mocked because she didn't have children. She was mocked, you know, but she, was, she was mocked by her, is he stepwife now? What do you call that? Eh? Eh? Co-wife. You know, the, the concept sounds very strange. In, it uh, sounds very strange today. But she was mocked, right? And when she was mocked, what did she do? Every year, they visited the temple. And so on this particular year, when they went to Shiloh, ah, when they went to Shiloh on that particular year, she said that, no, this year, this thing has to come to an end. Have you ever been, been teased to the point whereby you turned to God in prayer? You know, that, that's why some, so for some of us, my prayer for you is that you have people that will tease you. Yes, you have people that will tease you, that will... That will, that will make you feel uncomfortable. Because sometimes when we are too comfortable where we are, we don't seem to make progress. Do you know that if, they were, if everything was all nice for her, you know, she was being treated as the queen, perhaps she would not have done what she, what she did. But because of the teasing, what did she do? She went to God in the place of prayer to the point whereby she was praying 
And then the priest came to her and saw her praying and wondered to himself, is it not too early to take a gogoro? That is what the priest told her. Because it was, it's not too early for you to be drunk with wine because she was muttering. And that's to tell you the, the intensity with which she was praying. She was praying in a way that you couldn't even hear how she was praying. That's why the Bible talks about that the Holy Spirit helps our infirmities when we do not know what we ought to pray as we ought to with groanings that cannot be uttered. With groanings that cannot be uttered. Some of us need to be teased to the point whereby you just go to your room and go to your closet and you just begin to speak in tongues and then you come out and then begin to work miracles. That was exactly what happened to Anna. Hallelujah. She, was, she, she, she came to the place of, of prayer and encounter with God. And then after the priest, after she now explained the whole story to God, I know I'm not drunk, oh, but it is because I need a child from God. And then the priest said that it would be unto her as she had prayed, as she had prayed. Hallelujah. And then do you know that Anna now became the mother of Samuel, one of the foremost prophets in the scriptures? Praise the Lord. Who else would I mention? Time would fail us to talk about all the women in scriptures, but I'd like to talk about Deborah. You know, when the children of Israel um, left, entered the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey, the land of Canaan, um, Every time they do what is wrong in God's sight, God always sent a plague or sent uh, um, an army or sent, um, sent people to invade their territory. And so it was when um, there was a judge called Deborah. There was a judge called Deborah. When the, it, 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 they had enemies attacking them or enemies that was, that, were, that was making life unbearable for them. And the judge told the man that, that they should go to war. But you know what he said? He said that they will not go unless she goes with them. And so because of that, she made, she made mention that because of what you have said, this victory of this, of this particular um, a battle is going to go to a woman. So Deborah was a judge who stood out amongst other judges. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Which other woman should I mention in scripture? Let's talk about Esther. Esther was the first person in scripture to have been involved in a beauty pageant. Right? Praise God. Out of the lips of babes and sucklings, you have perfected praise. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right. God bless you, young man. He wanted to take over the microphone and preach. Okay. All right. So Esther was the first person in ancient time to have been involved in a beauty pageant. Right? Am I correct? Am I correct? And then she eventually became the queen. But the truth is, when she went through all this process, she never lost her identity. Because I know someone's going to ask, is it right or wrong to be involved in it? I'm not going to give you the answer to that question. But the truth is that in whatever you do, never lose your identity. How do I know she never lost her identity? How do I know she never lost her identity? When who comes to show, when it came to the time where the, 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 the people of Israel were to be exterminated. What did she do? She called the people together and said, let's engage in fasting and praying. Oh my God. When I say fasting and praying now, some people are looking at me. I'm saying what Esther did in the Bible. She said, let's engage in fasting and praying for three days. And then while they were praying, she said that she was going to go to meet the king. And if I perish, I perish. If I perish, I perish. But of course, we know that everyone who is taking that bold decision, anyone who's taking that bold decision to stand up for what is right, anyone who's taking the bold decision to, to, to stick to their values, irrespective of where we find ourselves, irrespective of where we find ourselves, stick to your values. Stick to your values. Whether you have m m plenty of money today, stick to your values. Whether you, you don't have too much money today, stick to your values. 
Whether you are in Nigeria, stick to your values. Whether you're outside the country, stick to your values. And what our values are, our values are enshrined in scripture. And so we know this, you know the story of how it ended with Esther. She was able to, to obtain a negative decree that would have led to the annihilation of the people of Israel because she went and visit and she went to meet the king. And ordinarily, if the king did not raise up the scepter, she would have been killed immediately because you dare not go to the presence of a king without being invited. But as soon as she came in, he lifted his scepter and asked her, what did she want? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, there are lots of other women in scriptures that I would like to talk about, but time would fail us to begin to mention each and every one of them. But even in recent times, I just mentioned one of the women that's a trailblazer already, and we have many other women. Now, my question is, just have, now this is the time where you ask the lady by your side, I'm waiting to hear of you being mentioned too. You know, the ladies, they have been the ones, tell, they have been the ones telling us since now, be. I'm waiting to hear of your story. Help me tell someone. Tell yet another person, the world is awaiting your manifestation. It's important that we become the best version of ourselves. Just in case you've not heard anything that has been said in today's service, maybe you slept off because I've not been jumping around and preaching. Just know this that God wants you to become the best version of yourself. Not comparing yourself with another, hallelujah, but becoming the best version of yourself. When we compare ourselves with others, we're not wise, but compare ourselves, compare yourself with the picture that God has placed in front of you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want us today to go all out to honor our mothers to go all out to honor those who have um, rocked the cradle for us, honor those who have spent time praying, who have spent time just being, giving us a lot of care and concern. And like I said, it's not only to mothers alone, but it's also to every woman and every person who has played a role in your life and is still playing a role in your life. And of course, for us men, we men, it's important that you take her out, please. Amen. Uh, it's the women that are clapping her. Do something special. It may not be, I'm not saying you should go to um, Transcorp Hilton or go to Protea or go to, but please, let's not be Mama Put. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, but, but then again, the bottom line is that honor is different for different people. For example, for your wife, maybe what she would want as honor is that you would just be the one that would take care of the whole activity in the house, from mopping the floor to attending to the dishes, you know. Maybe that could just be what she wants. Do you understand? In fact, that would save you money now, Abby. <laughs> All right, but, but whatever, it, why, why for some others, it may be just to get a gift, you know, whatever gift it is. It could, it could, it could just be, it's just something to show that we honor and appreciate our wives. Because really, 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 women are going through a lot and they are contributing a lot to society. That's why you, you hear this expression, a mother's instinct. You know, even the Bible said, can a woman forgets her suckling child. Do you understand? That's a mother's instinct. A mo there's no way a mother can forget a child. Even the worstest of women, there's no way. A mother, that's a mother's instinct. And God says, even in the same way, I will not forget you, O Israel. And then speaking of the men, God said, is there any child that asks of his father to give them um, an egg, that the, the, the father will give them a stone or ask for a fish and the husband and the father will give them a serpent. Eh? Is there any father like that? You know, that was actually a rhetorical question. A rhetorical question is a question that doesn't necessarily need an answer. I'm wondering how you are answering that question now. 
All right. So in the same way, God will give to us, will give to you, will give to you whatever you ask. So God has painted himself to us in two different ways. He has painted himself to us as a mother who can never forget a suckling child. In the same way, God can never forget you. It doesn't matter what the situation may look like. It may look like things are, everything is working against you. But no, 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 no. Things are not working against you. For, for we know that all things, all things are working for your good. All things. It may look like things are not turning out as you planned. Things are not going the way you had envisaged. But I want you to understand that in the midst of it, God has not forgotten you. And he's making everything to work out for your good. Amen. And perhaps you have a need. You have something that you're trusting God for. And you've asked him for it. In the same way, it, 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 an earthly father will not give, will, will not give a, a stone for, to, instead of egg or a, a serpent or a snake instead of a fish. In the same way, God will also grant you the desires of your heart. Amen. May the Lord bless his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we put our hands together for the Lord as we celebrate him this morning? Put your hands together as we celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. Grace isn't just a prayer you chant before taking a meal. It's the way we live. The Lord came to show me how crooked I am, but grace came to straighten me out. Hello, I'm Ostas of Barry Siago, the senior pastor of House of Grace Benin and I'm of Church of God Mission. Here, we liberate people from the bondage of religion through the gospel of grace that we teach encouraging them to be all that God has called them to be. House of Grace is a dynamic worship center where lives are transformed in an atmosphere of love, friendship, and humility. We have seen troubled marriages restored. We have seen miracle babies to couples who are waiting on the Lord for children, birth of new businesses, and an undying passion to reach out to the unsaved for Jesus Christ. Come fellowship with us today and let Jesus make a difference in your life.